Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're live from Xi'an, China. It is day number one. The round robin group stage has begun here for honor of kings. My name is Jump. Of course, I'm joined here yet again by the delight that is Sui Genari. And, uh, <laughs> sir, we saw ourselves an exciting match with Malaysia and China in game number or match number one. Yeah, we saw a little bit of life for Malaysia, but they're going to be up again. And it's going to be against another Chinese team, V-Star, who was invited here. So Malaysia, they're going to lick up their wounds, but at least they have some experience now playing against such a dominant team. They do have been some experience, but if there was a dominant force in D team there is an impossible force in V star as they are coming in as the town favorites they not or they are representing China alongside the other three teams KSSC dream team which we just saw and AGY and they're out for blood and M8 needs to find a way to fix the mistakes because they were yeah, watching they just had their first series and if you lose you get zero points right and this is their second series and this is a group stage so every single series is going to count a lot to make it into the next stage here so m8 they have to try their best to win this series all right well they're going to get themselves started in just a second but let's kind of recap what we've had thus far for those of you that uh, are joining us for the first time this are 10 teams split into two different groups group a and group b and they are representing countries from around the world we've got four teams from china we've got one malaysian team uh, a team from Spain, a team from Germany, two Brazilian teams, and of course one team representing United States of America. Of course the Chinese players are the ones of the fan favorites specifically because we are playing Honor of Kings. Yeah, we're definitely playing Honor of Kings. You can see how important the macro is, the teamwork, the communication, the jungle invades, uh, some similarities with Arena of Valor. And that's something that's going to help us really enjoy Honor of Kings. Yeah, and we've done a really, we've tried to do our best rather to uh, ensure that the things that we are spreading information for you guys are relative to those Arena of Valor terms. Specifically, because there is no true English client thus far, we do have the luxury of uh, actually taking a look at and seeing the English client in the spectator. But now it's time to actually go into the standings and see what we have thus far. V Star and D Team have played games already and have won, giving them a total of three points. V-Star defeating BMG on the tournament zone that we saw just a little while ago. Of Ooh. course, we just watched M8 lose to V-Star. So our two Chinese teams certainly standing up top this early. Yeah, they are looking pretty solid so far as round one has been completed. We're now looking at round two. Can M8 Hexa come back here and give this Chinese team a run for their money? But it doesn't look like it because BMG Gaming is a solid team from North America. They are taking a look at group number B. We've already seen two games conclude for that as well. AGY and KSC walking away uh, with their victories as it looks like Nova fell. And I believe that's INTZ. Robin left it can be completed. And uh, now our current match with M8 versus V-Star will be coming up soon. And opportunities will be plenty. Yeah, opportunities will be plenty indeed. And since they had such a tough defeat versus um, a D team there, I think M8 can learn from that first round and hopefully apply a lot of the insights and, and know that a lot of Chinese team, they rotate very similar. They get that river control. They do the four three-man rotations. So they got to see what they can do to counteract that. All right. Well, let's go ahead and see both of the teams that will be taking the stage. As you can see, representing the Chinese teams, it will be V-Star and then M8 Hexa and the Malaysian teams that we saw just a little while ago. They will swap flags in a moment of <laughs> sportsmanship as uh, all matching shoes and pants, mind you, for V-Star. So they, uh, they they got the match game strong, Sweet Jay. Might be a reflection of their synergy. It, hey, you know yeah. what? What better way to do it as we are in round number two with M8 of Malaysia and V-Star of China. They're going to get into their pods and they're going to get themselves getting ready to get into our second best of three of the night. Yeah, and look at them. They look pretty happy getting seated there. They probably were able to... Uh, oh, actually, I know all the teams play, so not able to watch each other potentially here. But you can see they look great with M8. You know, they, they're kind of rebound here. They, they look into good positive energy uh, uh, from their facial expressions there as well. So we got to see some consistencies as well, seeing in the way that their draft phase played out. 
Are there any big differences in the draft that you feel they need to capitalize upon if they want a chance at taking down D-Star? Yeah, I really like their second game draft versus uh, D-Team. They uh, Honestly, they when they chain their combos together, I think they should continue playing heroes that they understand and heroes that they play very well from a combo perspective. Because that's how you beat a team that might be uh, mechanically a little better because they've had the game longer. But you can outbeat them if your team is synergizing with their combos. And I feel like that's when MH can shine, is when they pick heroes that they know how to play very, very well together. They're going to be getting themselves into the lobby very soon. The look of determination on the Malaysian players' face is certainly something that we are used to seeing. There were some standout players, of course, their roster, Mike, Guang, Xuan, Jun, and ST Yang. And the big factor for me is going to be in Schwan because Schwan, specifically in that tank role that he had in the last game, uh, or the last opportunity, created a chance, but there's still a lot to be left to see for him if he wants his team to succeed. Yeah, he definitely needs to make sure that he steps it up and gives his team the vision to spot these rotations. And I feel like that's very important to support there. And you can see the, the Chinese teams when they play, they actually spit up their rotation and they prioritize the vision game. And this is so important Honor of Kings. Like, whoever has the vision always has the advantage. Checking through the statistics of the last couple games. ST Yong on your screen right now. And let's flip it over to one of our favorites. It's going to be V Star representing China with V, Q, J, M, and Mofan. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be interesting to see uh, where it's the first time I've seen V-Star play. I know they're an invited team. Um, um, I think that they'll probably play a very similar play style to D-Team. Early aggression. They'll probably pick the ADC meta. Uh, hopefully, M8 learns and bans away Marco Polo. Because I feel like Marco Polo just puts so much pressure against them on the tower. So I feel like they need to ban away Marco Polo and see what how the Chinese teams adapt from a draft show. But I mean, D-Team showed some versatility. They put, they allowed Blasting Cat to go into the favor of M8 in game number one, and then picked it in game number, or and picked it away in game number two. So good things were bound to happen for them. V-Star has a lot of very talented players on their hands, and that's where I think things are going to be interesting, is how are they going to be able to take away the mechanical power and, uh, and put it in their favor? Yeah, definitely. How are they going to put it in their favor, which is absolutely correct here. And I feel like the four minute mark, again, is so important. That first four minutes really determines the rest of the game. And every single time, they were caught out, Jump. Yeah. They died and gave up two to three deaths in the early game. And that is very punishing for you to give up um, those deaths early against a team that's that plays so surgically. They're getting themselves into the lobby. It does look like M8 will find themselves on the blue side yet again here for game number one. V-Star having the opportunity to have the counter pick for game number two. Remember, for those of you that do follow the international scene, we are on the two pick or the two uh, the two phase system. Whew. Math is hard at 11, 11 p.m. at night. Yeah, definitely math is going to be hard there a little bit. And we're going to wait until we see um, them to get situated into their matches here. I'm excited to see the Bandras and see if, if VSR is going to be playing a very different composition um, or are they going to play very similar aggressive composition that we saw from the team? I think if we, we if we're something that we saw is what happens when this Malaysian team is forced to play in a uh, a much more reactive sense, bad things happen. Yeah, exactly. They cannot react this time. They did not counter pressure any of the lanes. They let all. You never ever should give your opponents complete map control by pressuring all three lanes. You need the pressure rotate four man or three man and put pressure on one side of the map and make your team respond to your movements but M8 just responded to all of D-Team's movement which means D-Team was calling the shots that entire match. V-Star has had the advantage for a majority of their games. They are already sitting at 1-0 and in their bracket. A win here and then one more win would guarantee them a spot in the victory as we can see the excitement for both of these teams. The determination again, M8 needing to find a way to change things up and stop the, uh, stop the aggressive rotations that the Chinese squads bring to the table. <laughs> yeah, you can see, look at them. Um, that look on his face. Trying to stay focused, I get. So it's going to be very, very 
um, fun to watch. Uh, I love that we saw Sean Guan come out. It's a very fun mage to watch. And you can see, you know, how good of a solid mage makes on your team. You saw the power of Yusei in game one on Fire Dance Mage, and in game two on Sean Guan, the, the Ink Mage, and he did a phenomenal job with both. All right, players are getting themselves in the lobby in just a second. Remember, M8 will be taking up the blue. The V-Star will find themselves on the red. And representing China in the home crowd, again, wanting to make sure that they try some things across the board. Any standout picks for you for M8? Is there something that you feel like they need to yeah, get into their I, hands? I, I think they shouldn't play... Um, I don't think they should play the the Warrior Jungle. It, it didn't work out when they played Pangu. But in Game 2, they had a better chance by playing Nakoruru, who's, a, who's an assassin. But, I, I, but, but in, my, in my opinion, um, they they should really try to play Assassin and, and gank again. It's so important. If you're playing against an ADC meta, you need to get that Assassin jungler to the side lane and gank your opponent's um, ADC to slow down his farm. And they did not do any and put any type of pressure against Marco Polo in both games. And they can't do that. They can't let Marco Polo just farm and feed himself. Marco Polo created opportunities. Of course, we saw Yusei from Dream Team absolutely demolish his opposing mid laner. Not something that they're going to want to have happen to them yet again. As slow and steady wins the race for both of these players. We've got one more player waiting to get in the lobby. Yeah, one more player getting in the lobby. We're waiting on them. Hopefully, we get these start pretty soon here. Have you enjoyed your so, time in Xi'an so far? Yes, it's I only have. It's only day number one, Jeff. You know, I love it. I mean, the noodles. The city is known for its noodles. It's so yes, you remind so me. delicious every, all every, the time. Every time because you gotta try it. Ev no, every time we go to a meal, jump, try jump, the noodles. Jump, try the noodles. Try the noodles. Sweet jump. Jay, I've ate noodles at the last three restaurants. No, jump. You need to try the noodles. I'm telling <laughs> you. Okay, sure. Got it. Try the noodles. But Xi'an is such a beautiful city at night. You saw the ever it was beautiful. bright city. It was. Um, and they love their fountain. They love their fountain shows. Their water fountain yes, shows. That's true. They love their colored fountain shows. With the music. With the music. Yep. It's, yep. it's it great. It's choreographed to the music. There's yep. lights in the in the fountain and there's lights that shoot onto the fountain. So it has a nice effect. Purple, blue, whatever color you want, you're able to do it on the fountain show. Full RGB, just like the computers that we have on stage. Yeah. Full RGB, that's correct. So and you can actually run across these fountains too when they're, when they're not doing the show. Look, man, I could trip over a ladybug. <laughs> the last thing that I want to do is try to run across is try to run across running water. Yeah. That would be just asking for pretty much a disaster. Yeah, it looks like we're still waiting on one player, folks. So we're definitely going to hopefully s I see that player join the party pretty soon so we can get started here. But they are playing to make sure they're able to get to the next round because they are doing a round robin and every team is going to play every team in each of the groups. Final player looks like they are into the lobby, which means pick band phase is going to be starting in just a second, guys. Have no fear. And it's talking about the groups exactly and what what we have to offer with these. Now, we've, we've already seen um, D-Team, V-Star now, and M8 Hexa. The other two teams that are in Group A are BMG, uh, Blue Martini Gaming from the uh, United States of America, which if you remember, uh, won the Valor Series and actually made it to the uh, AWC yeah. in, at, the, at, the end of, uh, at the end of Season 3. And then, of course, JL Esports as well. Of course, do, uh, the Duke Geo from Brazil hanging out. Now, Group B, we will get to see a bit of tomorrow with KSSC. Nova Esports of Germany, Queso from Spain, INTZ of Brazil, and AGY of China. Yeah, you can see they were going to get started pretty shortly here. They are getting geared up into the lobby. But yeah, so many team jump from all over the world have come to participate and compete here. And a lot of players that we're actually used to seeing because uh, we have had such a global phenomenon in, in the Valor series. We had season one of the Valor series land in Los Angeles. We had season two in Sao Paulo, Brazil. We had season three in Sydney, Australia. A lot of the players that you and I both know, recognize and love have gotten to travel all over the world. And what better way to continue their travels here with the honor of Kings tournament at WCG 2019 here in Xi'an. Yeah, and actually majority of them or a lot of them uh, first time in China. So that must be a very exciting day to really see mobile esports and the potential it has in China with this game Honor of Kings here. So it looks like we are back into the lobby trying to get ourselves one final check. 
before we get ourselves started. For yep. our second set of the day. We are uh, bringing you guys this today, and we will then be live again tomorrow at 10 a.m. local time on the main stage with two more matches for you guys. And here it is. There's the look that we were waiting for. It looks to be the band pick is about to get ourselves started with M8 on the blue and V-Star on the red. All right. We are in the band pick now, folks. Let's see. M8 is going to go ahead and pick blue side again. They actually were blue side in both games against D-Team here. So let's see if they're going to follow the same ban strategy that we saw. They're going to bang Zhang Yi Ya, who is uh, Prada. But it looks like, no, they're actually going to let VSR ban it. And they banned Dunshan, which what, which was what they did in game one versus D-Team. So it looks like MH is going to try a similar uh, ban strategy. And let's see if they're going to um, ban away potentially a jungler or a mage if they don't want to do it. But I think Marco Polo might be a good ban here, honestly, because they have lost to Marco Polo in both games versus D-Team. They had some struggles, of course, for sure, but now... Looks like they're hovering, waiting the full seconds before they decide to get their second ban. What does it end up looking out to be? Yeah, they got to pick soon, yep. Oh, no, it's going to be, they're going to change it up. They're going to ban Zhang Fei, who is Crash in Arena Valor. And then Umbrella Girl, or Gong Su Li, is going to be banned next. Umbrella Girl gets taken out. Of course, we had Prada be taken out as well, as now the first pick is available here for M8. Lighting themselves take down. They're taking a lot longer in their yeah, decision they making that they had they're in the really last one. thinking through this right now. Oh, they're going to deny Yoko, who has picked both against their match uh, of D-Team. So very smart. They're changing things up a little bit. And because Yoko's taken, uh, uh, BSR is going to go ahead and take Pangu. And then Marco Polo, like I said, that's that's a show they need to pick or deny their the Chinese team because I feel like they're really comfortable with Marco Polo. They love Marco Polo's ability to hold his own in the top lane, and if he's able to play safe and not actually get behind early, he's able to decimate those towers at that eight minute mark. Yeah, definitely. That's gonna be massive there. He's gonna put a lot of pressure on the top lane. So they need to pick a hero that can respond against the op oppressive um, lane dominance that Marco Polo has, especially against non-range heroes. So what is Jun and Swan going to decide as their second and third pick here? 15 seconds left remaining. Oh, Guan Yu. They did a really good job with Guan Yu, so I do like the Guan Yu pick. And then Tia Yi is only picked up. Tia Yi, as you guys know, is Timmy from Arena Valor. So the Timmy gets oh, locked Kai. in. Kai. Kai is picked up. Kai is actually very, very strong in the side lane. Really good into ADC side lanes, actually. And that's that's uh, Emily from Arena Valor. So lots of damage, especially if you, you duel him, he's going to be able to activate that pass and give them that enhanced damage percent. All right, phase number one is completed, which means phase number two is going to be starting in just a second. The ban available, of course, for V-Star now as the bans go back into their favor. And what's it going to be? What do they want to deny away? Oh, Tiger is denied. He's very strong early. So very interesting that they're going to decide to decide Tiger here because we have not seen him come up in uh, the past two games that... Um, M8 played. Next ban taken away here by M8 and an immediate rebuttal there by V-Star. Yeah, Wang Zhong, Zhong Yu is, is banned. He's very good assassin. He can fly and do a lot of burst and CC abilities on his opponent. So you see why he was banned here. And now M8X, they're going to have to make their next move. 20 seconds after remaining before their final ban. V-Star, of course, getting then the first pick onto that red side. Slow oh, and steady. Yeah, ben, what? Blasting Cat gets taken off. Yeah, Blasting Cat's continuing off. That's Chun Munchi. Interesting that they're banning it away, and I don't think it's meta uh, potentially. There's a lot of other options they can pick, and Sun Bin is being hovered here by VSR. They can potentially take Alice, which they probably won't because Alice offers very, very little defense. But QY is going to go ahead and pick up that hero, which is, I believe, Wiro from Arena of Valor. Wero gets locked in there by V-Star. The 4 and 5 available by M8. They've had something of a struggle, of course, in their last series, losing to D-Team in a pretty rough situation. 35 seconds left. They're still laughing, and they're still keeping it cordial. Yeah, they definitely are keeping it cordial. They're going to have a lot of fun, too. So that's Su Lele, guys. Uh, Wero there, uh, VSR, last hero there. A very 
important to set up the plays, be the person that tanks the damage, and of course, um, when he falls, he has this ability that when you when his opponents pick up his his kind of army spirits that are around him, um, it's going to be able to accumulate power for his ultimate and bring him right back into uh, the fight. So that's something that you definitely want to watch out with the way that the two Lee is being played here. And so now our final two picks are locked in for M8. Yeah, they are locked in and they are ready to go here. And now, who is the mage that they're gonna pick? Chang'e and Shan Guan are all good picks. Chang'e is the uh, Chang'e is the rabbit mage, and she has a lot of AOE bursts and very, very good wave threat because of her ability too. So the picks are locked in. Thirty seconds now on the check as they're able to swap their talents and swap which player. He's going to be playing which of these heroes. This is our second round set here with Malaysia versus China in M8 Hexa versus V-Star, respectively. They're going to get themselves into the load screen, and we will be on the Valley of Kings in just a second. Yeah, you can see uh, M8 Hexa Guam has picked up um, a Domo, or, or the, um, the, the the sword mage, with ha who has a lot of huge long range. All right, they want it. It is here, it is time to get ourselves into it. V-Star, one of the favorites of the tournament, are gonna be going up against an M8 Hexa that needs to find a way to quickly bounce back from the loss they had. And the game has been loaded, and we find ourselves onto the Valley of Kings for our second set. Yeah, we are in the, the second set here. A lot is on the line for M8 Hexa. They have to make sure they try to win this game because they have zero points accumulated. If they lose, that's going to be giving another three points to um, a V Star here, and it's going to put them even more ahead. So we find ourselves in a very familiar position because it looks like Schwan wants to try to get up something, but M and J say no. They quickly push themselves into the mid lane, clear themselves up, and stall just enough so Jay can go over and snag his blue buff with that statue. Yeah. You can see there that they're doing a good job working together, getting that wave clear. Oh, we're going to go into a pause here, unfortunately. Hopefully they're going to be able to resolve pretty shortly. Making sure players are connected the way that they need to. Going to take themselves a pause. Looks like that they're talking to him. It game Wouldn't be surprised the game doesn't start back in just a couple seconds. But taking a look at the rosters and taking a look at what we have for the heroes on both sides, is there an advantage that you fall? Did V-Star, you feel like, won this win this draft? Yeah, I like uh, V-Star's draft there. They picked a lot of very strong um, meta heroes. Um, Chango is, is so strong in, in the early game, has so much AoE burst and wave clear. So to be able to control that, but honestly, the first rotation, they did a good uh, three-man rotation there by, by Sky there to make sure that they don't lose control of the mid lane. There's still a lot left to be seen though. Uh, it, you guys can't see the mini map right now, but we can. And it is still very even as far as uh, you don't have anybody pushing onto one side or another. It's only 47 seconds in the game. So there's a lot to be had. Line of scrimmage still exists. Yeah, definitely still gets this here. It's been over a minute of the pause right now. Hopefully it's gonna be resolved pretty soon, guys. Um, and there is the beautiful um, banner for or flag for China there and when China showed up on the stage the audience members went crazy to support them all right That's well awesome. pause is done technical difficulties have been achieved and now we find ourselves right back into the Valley of Kings as it does look like we have three members of M8 trying to see if they can provide some pressure we know that Marco Polo created a lot of difficulties for the enemy team in the last setup for M8 so now they want to try to see if they can create some extra pressure, but nothing seems to work just yet. Schwan gets a little bit of poke, but it's not going to be enough on a Q. Yeah, and that's what you want to do with Superman, is you want to be harassing your ADC side lane, so you minimize, their, you, man, you minimize their farm and don't let them get too ahead there. So it's going to be interesting to see how Guan Yu is going to be leveraged in this match. Another quick little technical pause. Making sure that they have connectivities the way that they need. We can see the tournament admins running back and forth and <laughs> making sure things are there. Yeah, let's see what is the issue here. Hopefully they're going to resolve it pretty shortly. Um, you can see the players are kind of asking questions. What's going on? 
Was there a was there a standout player from M8 Hexa in that in that last match that you feel you know had a uh, had a better had a better chance? We had Mike Guang, Xuan, uh SC Young, and their teammate. Yeah, I think this. I think ST Young could have played a little better um, with with the matches that we saw. I, I think it's it's more of a team effort though. They're, they're getting out rotated, and I feel like no one was being aggressive or trying to make plays and, and catch your opponent out. So, um, in terms of players, uh, no one really stood out for me for M8. M8. Well, they're gonna have to find a way to get a team effort or have somebody to help them out. Because with the draft here by V-Star, they're sitting pretty pretty right now. Yeah, they are sitting pretty. Let's see how long this pause is going to be needed here. Just got to make sure everybody stays connected to the match. Nothing, uh, nothing that they can't solve or figure out quite yet. Slow and steady. We do find ourselves uh, in a half-powered down setup. As it is... Uh, <laughs> All, it is a 11 a.m. right now, or sorry, 11 p.m. here in Xi'an. It has been a long and eventful day. We had the opening ceremonies. You had the the head of WCG give himself a speech in oh, English. That was actually, great. yeah, it was a, it was a speech in English. They they did a great job at indicating what they want to do with the future of esports for WCG and and definitely add an extra level to things with the new WCG that is here in 2019. Yeah, the new WCG is getting rebooted. That opening ceremony video was amazing. It was beautiful. And what was that screen called? Oh, they had a projection screen. Yeah. They had a projection screen, and behind the projection screen, they had dancers uh, and choreographed the actual graphics to go with the dancers themselves, so it look, made it look like that they were actually the ones kind of painting and going across. It was great. Oh, that's awesome. All right, looks like they're still going to wait here. It's been a, a little over two minutes already. They're going to wait and see Resolve these. The admins are right behind them trying to fix probably hopefully an issue with the phone and not the network. All right. Well, they're going to be getting uh, getting themselves. They're going to be getting themselves in a pretty good situation. We're going to make you guys look at us. Come hang out with us for a second as we uh, are going to get that back, get them back in the game yeah. pretty shortly. Now, remember, we did get to see the standings uh, where, bo where both of our Chinese teams secured themselves a win. But uh, it, it did look like KSSC was able to take a game off of uh, off of their opponent, which created a good opportunity, AGY. So good spot for them. Yeah, definitely a very, very good spot for them. Um, and you can see that it's been a long day at WCG. It's been exciting. Uh, finally, we get to see the first series of Honor of Kings wrap up. We're in the second series now, and we're going to see a lot more teams, what type of heroes are they going to pull out what type of meta are they going to pull out it's going to be similar to the king pro league that we see in china or they're going to try something different and unique up their sleeve and i want to see how q is actually able to uh play marco polo because the marco polo that we had in the last game with the cuckoo was very strong and we got to see what happens when marco polo is able to play safe in the early game and get farmed up because the tower taking potential is absolutely unreal with those auto attacks yeah, definitely, especially when he's fed there. They were not able to gank him or slow him down. And once he is fed and he gets the lead, addresses the opponent jungler, then it's going to be very, very hard to play against a seasoned um, pro that knows how to play ADC in position and put pressure and, and basically take a lot of your objectives. We're going to get ourselves in the game in just a second, everybody. So don't you worry too much about that. We had the opening ceremony earlier, as we talked about, the flags of every single one of the countries. I believe 60 or no, 74 countries <laughs> are, uh, no, uh, 24 countries are, are represented uh, over the course of everything that we have. You've got Hearthstone, you've got Crossfire, you've got Dota 2, Warcraft 3, yeah. Starcraft 2, Honor of Kings, all sorts of games that uh, are debuting here for the new WCG and showing that this truly is a spectacle that celebrates esports across a wide variety of not only countries, mm. but game titles as well. Yeah, and, and, and that's the key for esports to continue growing is um, to be adopted more in the mainstream, right? And I feel like this event like this on, on this stage is definitely going to help that. So now we uh, get to hang out.
and get to chill. Um, <laughs> trying to think of some of the, the other the fun things. The Cube, if you have had a chance to check any of the things on social media or any of the video packages they have, there's this giant cube. It's like about, I don't know, it's 75, 80 meters away from us right now. It is this just gigantic cube uh, that is full LED and has everything from video presentations to some of the streams that are going on. There's a lot to see and a lot to experience. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I know. I can't wait to see how the robots um, is going to play out. That's oh, actually one of my favorite. The battle versus, robots? Yeah. But it's oh, motion it's sensor so battle. Cool. So if you guys don't know, there there is a there is the Battle Robots Championship that is taking place over the course of this weekend as well. And it's not just you have a controller or you have a tablet or a phone and you're kind of controlling these these robots. You actually have motion sensors on your arms. Uh, you've got two on your elbows and then two... Wow. On your forearms. And then two uh, basically looks like Wii Remote joysticks. And they're in your hands, and you can control every ounce of movement. Uh, and you have swords or shields really? or whatever in both hands. And, and you just get to do that. And then your, your little robot is the same thing. It looks very fun, just the, the size of the robots. And in then, five it's like, it's years. It's like a boxer arena. It's like that movie by Hugh Jackman. What was that? Yeah. In, in <laughs> five years, I see that being the thing, where you actually have these just giant life-size robots and motion capture is at such a high level uh, that you actually are going to see these fighting robots kind of take the stage. Yeah, yeah. And, and I can't wait to see how that's demoing the future of sports, electronic sports. And, and those robots might be something that would be fun and enjoy. And I can see a lot of fans enjoy watching it. Yep. Not only that, you've got the... Uh, uh, two different ch uh, children activations. You've got Lego Education, where you can learn by building different types of Legos. Uh, there are different like types of Lego builds that you can kind of build and take home with you. There's also the Craft Education Contest, oh, okay. which has been uh, an entire area uh, that we've had next to the Caster Lounge, where it's they have um, dozens of children that are coming in and participating in educational crafts. Uh, to not only show movement, but more importantly, just to show uh, an addition of creativity from a young age. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That creativity from the, the young age of youth, that is what kind of brought us mobile esports, right? Uh, the youth in China, so many people, one out of 17 Chinese people play Honor of King. Uh, they have a player base of over 200 million monthly active players, and that's just in China. I'm not even counting um, Arena of Valor or AKA Honor of Kings International in that I, number. I'm cur curious to see as well, uh, what the increased demographics have been of the younger kids actually playing mobile games. Because when you when you think about the demographic of gaming as a whole, you've got esports like Fortnite that have 14-year-olds qualifying. You've got a very low demographic in some place like China as well that kind of adds that kids love to play these mobile titles, and they're actually pretty darn good at them. Yeah, they're very, very good um, at them. So looks like we're going to get a restart. We're going to jump back into this game potentially here. And that's going to be exciting. All right. Well, it does look like the game has oh. started and then immediately paused again to... Uh, they, they wanted to make sure the connectivity was there, but not just yet, guys. Still got to still gotta hang out with us. Yeah, still. yeah. They're going to try to restart here. Hopefully, we're going to jump right back in the game so we can get some action with Honor of Kings. All right. They uh, Looks like they are back into the game, trying to see if they can move around. You've got some players that are moving. Nothing just yet. It does look like we are going to be going into a restart, guys. Uh, and, and getting themselves back in with a fresh match. Yeah, we're going to definitely have the restart, hopefully solve a lot of the technical issues that they're, they're seeing here. Um, but it, give, it did give an insight in terms of how well I thought that they defended some tower pressure that we see a lot from Team China. Yeah, now the good thing as well is uh, because it was so early in the game and we kind of had this restart in a lot of ways, mm. um, it, it is going to keep things at kind of an even playing field in a lot of ways, which uh, at the, in that moment in that game, there wasn't really anything that kind of shifted from one direction to another. So they kind of got to just a moment to chill, relax, and kind of hang out. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think that what we're seeing from Malaysia that you know the ultra aggressive aggressive compositions and the play style is, is usually one, the one that comes ahead the ones that dictating the flow calling the shots not reacting to your opponent's moves but being proactive and making sure that you get all and you focus the objectives and keeping track of the jungle timers and so on so something a lot of things that Malaysia can definitely learn from the Chinese teams all right they are going to remake the lobby get ourselves back into that very yeah. quickly. You're still going to have to look at us. I'm sorry. Uh, it is it is 8 a.m. on the West Coast right now. So yeah. if you're there in Los Angeles, you're awake. Hello. 
and welcome. If you're sitting on the East Coast, it's at, let's say, a whopping 11, or 11 a.m. there for you. So you're coming out and hanging out as well. It is, uh, it's Wednesday morning, or no, Thursday. Mm. So, you know, lots, lots to be had. Yeah, yeah, definitely a lot uh, to be had, indeed. What, so. else have you, what else have you enjoyed about Xi'an? You, you showed up a day before me. So you got to kind of tour around and, and see a lot of the things, especially the the hotel that we're staying at. Yeah. There, there's a couple little parks, and you were able to, I believe, visit one of them as well. Yeah, yeah, the, the Dagon Pagoda. Yeah. They have a great uh, fountain, light show, a lot of things to do around there. It's a tourist attraction, of course. I tried to actually go to the Tang Paradise, um, but half the park is closed down, unfortunately, and they have the hibiscus flower there and everything because hibiscus is the uh, state flower of Hawaii. So there's so much to see in Xi'an. I mean... I, I didn't even scratch the surface. You can be halfway across the world, and you're still going to find a way to have that connection with Hawaii, isn't it? Yeah. Always. Yep. Yeah, you saw, uh, you, you posted online as well. You finally got to hang a, a painting, was it, in your in your bedroom? <laughs> yeah? I saw, I, I saw that one. I had one. to get something done, you know? Yeah, you had to, you had <laughs> keep to do Keep yourself something. busy. Yeah, keep yourself busy. Uh, but you got the way to, to throw a homage to your to your home country, which is something exciting that, that we could do here a, as well because you have so many different countries, because you have so many different teams mm. that are representing their home countries. And you mentioned this on the broadcast at the beginning of the day. All five members of the team have to be from the same representative country yeah. for them to actually qualify. Yeah, exactly, and I feel like that is a good start forward for the new WCG. You want to make sure that uh, normally the rules are three-fifths of the roster is from that country, so yeah. the other two can be contracted, but I think it's just good to keep it local and keep it truly, um, you know, U.S. versus whatever other countries and all of the rosters are living in that country and our citizens. Yeah, and we're, we're taking from a lot of the, the Olympic uh, backgrounds in that sense, is if you have the bronze, silver, gold, it's not just first, second, and third. It is bronze, silver, gold, and, and you kind of have that opportunity to represent your country, be more than yourself. I, every time I think of that, I think of, uh, I don't know how an old movie watch you are, but you think about Miracle, uh, with, Miracle. The, with, with the old United States hockey team that went up against yeah. Russia. Uh, and, and the whole movie, they're like, who do you play for? And they, they keep naming the colleges, and at the end of the movie, they're like, who do you play for? And they're like, United States. Like, yeah. it's just one of those yeah. things where you, you get to go on this international stage and, and represent something beyond yourself which kind of adds to the allure uh, and to the pride in a lot of ways because yeah it's cool to represent your team but it's even more cool when you could represent your country yeah it's it puts a lot on the line a lot of pride there and when you win your country normally kind of supports you yeah you know and and hopefully um, we see some of that from our fans and and players all right. Well, they are getting into the lobby right yes. now. We will be getting into uh, our rapid pick band. I don't believe they're going to show you the pick band because it's going to be the same the same heroes that we had from uh, from the pick band that you guys just saw. Mm. And then they're going to be getting right into the game. So should be just a couple seconds, guys. I know you're tired of looking at our faces, but it will all be over soon. I promise. Yeah, the jet lag is actually kicking in for because right now, what time is it in LA right now? Uh, it's eight a.m. Yeah, it's eight a.m. Um, uh, wake for, up! And it's time right to wake up, 11. Jeff. I know. I need. I need like a coffee at this time. Eleven p.m. here. I got water. Xion. I got water for you. Oh, water! Water could work. That's, water about, could that's work, about it. You know? That's all uh, I got for but, you. But you know, I can't wait. You know, once the game starts, I'm gonna get stand standing up, get the blood rushing, um, and make sure that we're gonna have an awesome match here. They're all loaded up in the lobby. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Let's let's do this. Are you? So. Are you sure you're ready? You're like, no. I'm not <laughs> yes. All right. Band pick has started. Again, it's going to be the exact same band pick that we had, so it should go pretty quickly. Nothing uh, nothing too crazy on to that. The tournament admins uh, are not flocking inside the pods anymore, which means <laughs> that things are usually fixed. If there's more than, like, two, then things are a little rough. But before that, you're good. You're set. And they're going to get themselves going and hopefully back into the Valley of Kings very shortly. Yeah, interesting that they're uh, banning here. Um, where it looks like, okay, let's say they're, they're picking. They're going to transition, hopefully, to, to the game here. But Zhang Gia is being banned a lot, and that's Prada. Because, again, you know, if you have Prada on your team, she's going to get you level 4 um, early and that's going to give you the, the, the power spike level four to make plays in that early game rotation with, with Zhang Yi as mid or, su or support. Yeah, and they're, they're blasting through the picks and bands like what we mentioned, which okay. means in the, in the next like two to three minutes, we should actually be getting into the match Yeah, and, and going off that board. Remember, for those of you that are just joining us, this is Malaysia versus China. Uh, we've got M8 Hexa going up against V-Star. 
Malaysia lost their match in match number one, or set number one versus D team. Mm. Now they're going up against the other Chinese team in V-Star, which won their match earlier today as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, this draft, though, there's going to be checking on this and hopefully it's everything is good to go and situate it because they, See, they look like they drafted the actual draft yeah you know it's the exact yeah. same draft from there 20 seconds get loaded in which means another 30 seconds and they'll find themselves in the valley of kings and get ourselves started now it is a hard reset so the little pokes the little damages that they had in game number one those aren't going to count this is essentially a fresh new game once we get ourselves loaded in which is a big chance for m8 to potentially start off in the early game strong yeah if they can do that and maintain that lead and they definitely have a very, very good shot. All right. Well, we're going to get ourselves loaded, guys. I know you've been waiting for a long time. I know that we've been having to uh, uh, to provide you with the commentary that is just telling things that he hangs on his wall. But it's okay. <laughs> we're not going to have to do that anymore. We're finally going to get ourselves loaded in. They do see them loaded into the lobby. We see it. Everybody has it. And it's time to get ourselves into the game. Yep, it is. It is indeed. And I can't wait to see how, again... M8 is going to fare against another Chinese team. All right. It's there. The game has begun. They find themselves in the Valley of Kings. And Sweet J, waiting is over. Let's get ourselves in the game. Yeah, finally, the wait is over. We're ready, guys. This is going to be the last series of the day. Looks like another pause has been in effect here. Um, so hopefully it's not going to be a major technical issue uh, potentially here. All right. Well, it does look like they... They found themselves uh, in a rough spot again, so ha ha! Just we're back! When, we're back! Just when you Woo. thought we were done, <laughs> you and us were both fooled. It's all right. It's, it's going to be okay, Jeff. It's like the theme song, Beyond the Game. You know, I guess we're, we're beyond the game. You know, it's. Yeah. That was a stretch. <laughs> Even for my standards, that was a stretch. Even for my standards. Uh, this is called How You Feel. <laughs> yeah. It's so. important. Yeah. It's important. All right. It's important. So, uh, uh, quiz time. Favorite honor of King Hero. Favorite honor of King. Yeah, to oh pick my your favorite. Goodness. Who's there's your favorite? So many. Well, but yeah, there's a lot gotta, of heroes. It's got to be Levi or Murad. Have you seen his skin? His skin. I think it's like I don't. I don't look at characters and I'm like mm, that's a really that's that's some really nice. Dude, skin. the effects are just it's just, okay. it's just okay. badass. Okay. Yeah. But, all right. But. He's one of the most popular heroes, actually, in the game uh, because he was so meta a few seasons ago, but his skin is a couple hundred dollars, and it sold very well. All right. Well, they uh, have unpaused. I think they're double-checking to make sure that things are good just now. We see everybody moving on the map, which is a positive moment for me. Yeah. It looks like uh, we could potentially get ourselves back into the game. And remember, M8 finds themselves on the blue. V-Star finds themselves on the red. And it's time to get ourselves into the game, guys. The waiting. Let's try it again. Round. Yes. Let's try Finally. it again. Let's Round do this. two. And a chance to get ourselves into the match. Yeah, you can see Chang'e there. The clear that that AOE that she drops, it just does constant damage over time. Once she levels up and gets her items, that is going to do so much AOE burst damage and give her complete uh, uh, lane control. And, and that was a good move there by stealing away V Star. Um, JX, just throw away one of the jungle creeps. I mean, that was the difficulty that we saw from M8 at the last time, was the difficulty with their buffs and being able to actually hold on to it. M tries to get a couple little damage. J tries to get some as well. Yeah, you can see there the circle. You see how much damage it does there. That's ability one, that ore being flown out. It does, it pierces right through the wave. But one thing they do have is uh, Guang. He, M8 Guang is actually playing Domo. He has... Probably one of the farthest ranges of poke there by throwing out those little two swords at his opponents. Five seconds until the Tyrant is spawned. And this is where we see these Chinese teams really start to create some pressure as Guang takes a lot of damage and is forced to blink up out of there. M's going to take a little bit as well. He's going to get back, Whoa. but he gets immediately healed back up yeah. by his teammates. Wow. And that's going to be a huge boost for them. Schwan's down on this side, but it's not going to be enough just yet. That will ward the members of M8 away and allow J-Star to claim the Tyrant for themselves. Yeah, again, J-Star, uh, VS-Star doing such a good job with that rotation there. Even after getting aggressed on, they're able to take back control of the river and then rotate and take the Tyrant. All right, so V-Star is able to get themselves the early XP advantage of the Tyrant. 
And now it is a slow match yet again as they decide to take their time. We've got multiple members roaming up towards the top side of the map. And uh, they've got the timing on the blue statue, which means that M and J, as well as the rest of the team, so their four members are on the top side of this. They try to take it, able to get oh. it into the hands of J. And they're going to decide if they can ward off. Want to see if they can potentially get a gank off onto the top side on the Schwan, but it's not going to be enough yet. Yeah, it's not going to be enough yet, but you can see there, the, the gold of play isn't that bad for M8, though. And it looks like Guang, he knows how to play this mage extremely efficiently. So, we'll see. And look at this engage. Messi, you're in big trouble. He's going to back off. Yep, not going to be enough for him just yet. As M8 doing a good job of keeping things passive. They haven't died just yet. Only about a 300 gold lead advantage of V-Star. As Q, though, is left to farm. We saw the struggle that M8 had against a powerful Marco player. Oh, Look at that damage coming that out of Q. That poke there. Again, they're so good at putting so much pressure on the lane that their ADC is on and making sure they win that lane. Jun has a nice little delight of mobility to be able to keep him out safely as ST Young is waiting in the bush on Vi, but don't know if he's going to be able to get that kill. It's a little bit of poke, but again, it's not enough. And you can see, just like that, the pressure of the dual lane pressure and the poke from Marco Polo is going to give him that top lane turret just like that. So really good job by QI. Yep, V takes a little bit of damage, but he's able to get down safely. It does look like we do have another member that's trying to come and help out. Is it going to be enough? Jay takes a lot of damage. There isn't any mana left on wow. ST Young, but he's able to barely come out alive with the top tower down. That allows for J and V to shift onto that side and try to see if they can get a little bit of extra damage. It is a rotation. Four members now onto the side. They're going to have to go out. The hook goes in. Mike tries to get it. Isn't able to get the teammates. They now swap over onto V, but he's able to get the mobility. Wow. He's able to have it. First blood on the opposite side goes into the hands of the Marco Polo. That's Q being able to pick that up. And so when you had the four-man dive onto the bot side of M8, the re immediate reposition there by V-Star to take the Tier 2 tower. Yeah, and that was a three versus two, and they still were able to track one up. And look at that. They're allowing QY and MS to two versus one, get the kill into Guan Yu, and then take the tier two and then get half of the high ground and tower And he's got down. the high ground That's tower huge. to 50% HP. Yeah, that five is Five minutes into the game. Yeah, five minutes. Again, another turret here has, has been destroyed here. And, and V-Star is just looking to take a big run away with this lead. Almost a 3,000 gold lead at the five and a half minute mark. The tyrant has respawned. You do have two members onto the top side, but it doesn't look like anybody from M8 is rotating thus far. They're going to continue to keep pressure with the split pushing Marco Polo. This was an effective strategy to defeat M8 in match number one. V-Star keeping with their Chinese brethren here in match number two and doing the exact same thing. Yeah, definitely doing the exact same thing there. Complete control of the map, putting pressure Letting their ADC Marco Polo farm up and get the head. You can see the gold difference there. 4.5k gold jump compared to all of his opponents there. Barely even getting close. Q sitting at a whopping 2,000 gold above his opponent in that top lane, which is a solid situation to be in if you were a Marco Polo player. As four members are onto that bot side, they want to see if they can get the tier 2 tower. But look at how they rotate their format. Oh, he misses that ability, unfortunately, but... Q does a really good job at moving on to that. M tries to get some damage onto Schwan. They're going to wait for the next set of waves to be able to pull up. V tries to wait, and you can see the stun marker coming out, which means they are going to know with the audio cue. Right. But they're still going to have to wait for it. You've got the red statue that's available. You've also got what looks to be little pieces here with the bears, but it's not going to be enough yet. M and V, they want this red statue. Yeah, definitely do. And look at the, the formation there, the rotations into the jungle. And they're just slowly just starving out M M8 here. And this was so. that bleeding effect that we saw as a difficulty with D-Team in the last one. Of course, the auto attack damage from Q able to do a lot of damage. That'll be the tier two in the V-Star's yeah. favor. Now they're up 4,000 gold. Yeah, two towers down within the uh, seven minute mark. And, but good job on MH not giving too many kills over. It's going to be a third tower now going to MH as well. They're able to get themselves yet another one that increases the gold lead to 4.5 thousand V. Loves waiting in the wayside to see if he can get damage, but more importantly, it's creating the pressure without actually being there. Yeah, exactly. Look at it. They're just constantly farming and feeding and taking up the jungle. But look how they do this. They invade. They put pressure on the map. They take the enemy jungle. Marco Polo there takes their own jungle. And then their mid lane 
mage there, um, uh, JX, takes their own jungle on, on that side of the map. And look at it, they're ready to set up down their next play. This efficiency of gameplay is so fun to watch. 5,000 gold advantage at just before the 8 minute mark for V-Star. They're going to control the enemy jungle completely. Guang takes about two-thirds of his damage. Schwan's oh. not able to do anything. Q-Able picks up another kill. Marco Polo is now on a rampage. Yeah, he's definitely on a rampage. He has the red buff as well, which is going to make him be fine there on his own. Anto, she's missing. So at the eight-minute mark, V-Star is absolutely demolishing as they are controlling every ounce of the jungle. Now they're going to push onto this tower. Look how quick the tier two goes down into the mid lane. There's nothing that M8 can do. Thankfully for them, the minion wave does die. But at what cost does it have? It is a delaying of the inevitable as Red Statue goes down. And yet again, another tyrant has been born. Yeah, and look at that, their rotation there, taking the lane, they're taking the jungle. Their timing is just perfect. And this is the right play here to take the Overlord and go ahead and push to finish the game because it's already 8 minutes and 50 in and they have a solid 5k gold lead but they might get a kill on the VY here. Yeah, VB. V gets caught out so a difficulty for them but it doesn't really matter because the vanguards will be arriving soon exactly. and as we saw in our last match that is when very difficult things do. Tier 2 in the mid lane as well here for V-Star. Yeah, that's unfortunate. They let the tier, uh, two, tier 2 tower fall down there without any protection from the opponent minions and the overlord vanguard is going to start making its way down here but look they're going to go ahead and go straight for the uh, dark tyrant looks like they uh oh no it's the tyrant actually yeah it's, it's 30, 30 seconds yeah. ten, 10 minute mark yeah 10 minute mark. 10 minute marks when it transforms they're going to have it because it's fine because as soon as that 10 minute mark hits it's just going to respawn again that's correct and that's going to give them again the gold and experience lead so really nice job. These people definitely have a clear strategy and vision to play, and they're executing it seemingly well. 6,000 gold advantage for V-Star, despite the fact that they only have a one-kill advantage. And this is where things are starting to get difficult. One member has fallen now. Two members have fallen. That's a killing spree for Q and the Marco Polo. The Tyrant flees into darkness, but it doesn't matter because only two, three members are left alive. And with the Overlord Vanguards yeah. available, Look that, at that means push. the turret goes down. Yep. And this could be all for naught yet again for M8 Hexa. Yeah, this is, again, a repeat. But now they have lost an even faster press. There's only 10 minutes in this game, John. Um, and it looks like B6 Star looks like one of the stronger teams in this group. Yep, as quickly as it began, game number one goes into the hands of V-Star as they secure themselves that quick, quick victory in their hands. And uh, that was a very quick decimation. Yeah, very quick, very surgical. And you can see, oh, oh, QI there did such a good job on Marco Polo. It's so a, much pressure on the is top lane. This three games yeah. in a row where M8 has struggled because of a Marco Polo. Yeah, and, I, and that's what I said. They should ban it away and not give it to the China teams. I feel like they're so comfortable playing it and they're getting the lead um, um, with him and letting him farm freely. And then his other teammates are then invading jungles and giving him so much room to then put pressure on the top lane, take tier one, take tier two, and, and, and Su Lee, his support, did a really good job of supporting him. So your M8 and does it, was it strictly because of the Marco Polo or were there, you think, other factors in the early game that kind of spelled their demise? Yeah, I, I think they just didn't know how to um, respond to the river control. Again, they're constantly losing too much river control. And, and, and they had one chance there when they saw that uh, there was a four top and then one bot. And they were able to jump on VV and get the kill on him. Um, and, and that's the kind of thing that they need to do more of. Yeah. Right? Otherwise, they're going to continue to fall behind. And I feel like they're playing a, too much of a passive game to be able to react and change things around. So now... They need a shock. And awe? Yeah. Something like that. To change up their style. We have game number two getting started in just a second. Taking a look at uh, what looks to be them getting into the lobby. M8 Hexa looks like it. they will be on the blue side for now to be potentially four games in a row. And V-Star, we told you that they were going to be a slightly more formidable opponent than D-Team. And it definitely proved such as they certainly took advantage yeah. once they I hit mean, those that game spikes. was done around 10 minutes. Yeah. And normally the, uh, the games um, that they have are normally around, you know, 20 to 25 minutes. A lot more. 
A lot more. A lot more indeed as V-Star is looking to get themselves out of their group and uh, potentially looking for an all-Chinese semifinal and final. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be very interesting to see if any countries can come and compete with the powerhouse that is China and, and all of their teams here. But that shows you just how competitive uh, Honor of Kings is he he here in China. You it know, really so many is. Players play it. And when you also take a look at the prowess that V-Star and D-Team were able to have, I'm curious to see what happens when they do play each other tomorrow, specifically be revolving around the fact that they both understand rotations, they both understand what it means to be proactive, but I'm curious to see what both of these teams are when they have to be reactive to the opponent yeah. when they're going aggressive. Yeah, and that's the key there. I, I, you just start reacting and counter um, rotating against your opponent to get a gank. And I, like I said, if they do a four-man uh, top and one-man bot, then that four-man, you need to defend that tower with, with your with your three-man normally. Um, and then whoever is able to take the defense, the other two across the map can then put pressure on the solo uh, split pusher. All right. Well, it does look like the uh, a side swap now is as, as, uh, just as I said Good. the blue side. Yeah. And eight actually now opts to go for the red which could be a huge shift for them, changing on to the reactive side and now going for the counter pick strategy. Yeah, and I think I think that's good. That's a good change because the past three games they were blue, they were blue side, and they yeah. lost all of those games. So you gotta change it up, and hopefully they have their their trump card up their sleeves here because they need it. So your red side for M8, you've seen the struggles you have had three games in a row on blue side. What do you shift towards for red side as a priority? Um, I think that since we know uh, VSR bans uh, Zhang uh, Ziya, who is Prada in Arena Valor, then I think they should um, probably from a draft standpoint make sure they get Marco Polo or they ban it. Well, that was the question that I was going to ask. Like, that's if, key. if you're V-Star and you're blue side, do you first pick Marco Polo? If it's open, yeah. 100%. Yeah, because yeah. he's a very unique carry. You know, he has a lot of uh, mobility. He has his stacking ability. He actually does the most games... Uh, most damage um, per games there in a lot of the games that he's played. So M8 finally deciding to change up their strategy and going on to the red side. It does look like everybody is in the lobby, so we will be getting into that game very shortly. And uh, hopefully for M8 it goes a little bit better than their last three because they are <laughs> certainly finding themselves as the engineers of the struggle bus. Yeah, yeah, they are finding themselves in a tough spot. And, that, and that's because, like you said perfectly, the reaction... Uh, they're not responding um, and and making sure that they counter the rotations of better teams or or better yet, you know, make sure that when um, they're setting up for the tyrant, they can ambush the opponent before they get the tyrant. There's a lot of plays they can do, but they need a lot of teamwork and synergy to pull that off. They do indeed, and that's kind of been the difficulty for them. Uh, I feel like that throughout the entirety of the game, they've only gotten one blue buff. And that was just what the blue buff was at the very, very beginning of the game. As now, it looks like uh, we are going to get into the pick ban in just a second. China versus Malaysia. Yep, China versus Malaysia. We're going to be coming up here shortly. Um, but you can see, like, so far how well Team China has been doing in this group stage. Looks like we're still waiting here. Hopefully they're going to get those things resolved and we can uh, get the party started. Yeah. They're having their discussions, they're having their fix, and now we go. Here it is. The band pick has begun, and it looks like VSR now is going to ban away the Dunshan. Oh, yeah, yeah. That Dunshan is going to be banned away. Oh, too bad we can't we can't see him as well. We did see him in one game and, and, and ended up doing, doing very well for them. So, and there we go. Zhang, Zhang Ziya is going to be banned again. He's the hero that gives your entire team extra experience. So you turn level four for an Alcid, um, and that's why uh, he's so popular. I made on the red, V Star on the blue. As what do you know? It looks like they ban Marco Polo away from themselves because they have a more higher prior. They have a higher priority on the first pick, and they know that if they let it go yeah, through, it exactly. will get it oh, will get picked on the red side. They're gonna side. go ahead with, with Zhang Pei, who's Crash. In, in this game, his first pick. I mean, is he that meta? Very interesting. He might be for somebody like V-Star. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how good V-Star is going to be on this meta. All right. The 1-2 now coming out for M8. 
what do they need to go with here, Sweet J, to potentially make sure that they can shut down this crest? Yeah, I think for them, um, there's uh, there's a lot of different options for the support role. We saw, you know, Alice being played uh, earlier. We saw D Dunshan being played earlier. You can also play Baichi or Mina. Um, normally, she's flexed to side lane, but she wants to flex foot lane. So, I think those are the things that we can look at. M8 doing what they did as well in game number one and take their time as now here comes their one-two pick. Yes, yeah, they're definitely taking their time with the picks here. And look, they're going to go ahead and pick up. Um, this is actually Elsu in Arena of Valor. So that's very interesting. And I wonder if they're going to be able to play him really well. It's, it's Baili, Shouye, or Quiet Eye. Quiet Eye. We're keep, we'll call him Quiet Eye because he is the sniper from afar. And it looks like Yoko gets picked up as well for V Star. As now we swap over to M8 and their final pick. And it looks like uh, they need something to go in synergy with these first two picks. Yeah, they definitely need synergy. Anything with CC, so D Renji uh, would work, which is the Valheim of this game. Um, let me see if. This hero, Galo, there, an, an archer, if they want to pick that, or they can go with Sunbin. They could pick Sunbin here. They're taking their time, Sweet J. They're having conversations. They're saying, you know what, we don't want to go anything just yet. It does look like they uh, hover what seems to be the Cal Diva, but instead they lock in something else. Yep, they're going to go ahead and lock in Sunbin there, have that Alice. Looks like they're going to probably synergize it with a mage and a gun. gun. Sorry. Looks like they're going to go ahead and round it out and, and have the band next here. All right, second band phase has begun. M8, of course, getting the first set of bands for stage number two. Two bands and then two more ticks for both of these teams. Taking their time, they want to communicate. Despite the fact that they've lost their last three games, they want to ensure that they uh, come out ahead here as... There we go. Pig actually gets banned away by M8. Yeah, that's a good band. Pig's very good side lane, uh, especially on top. So it has ultimate that can trap people and really... Um, be able to CC them very hard here. Another thinking moment for M8 as they decide what they want their last and final band to be. Yeah, they're definitely taking their time and thinking about it to the last second every single time here because I guess the match is that important for them, you know? They have lost every single game. It is. They, so have, far against China, they so have to find a way to think about it. They got to find a way to force a game number three if they want any chance of potentially making it out of the group stage because with a loss here, there's no way that that's going to be the case. Yeah, let's see. They're going to take their time and think what should their fourth, fourth version be. Okay. So, still thinking about it. Yep. The last two bands have came out. So now phase number two has begun. 35 seconds left remaining on M8's picks. Anything specific that you feel like could round this out quicker? Yeah, I think I think in terms of Mage, uh, Shan Guan is still open, so they can pick up Shan Guan here, but I don't know if they play that Mage, but or maybe they can pick uh, Xiao Chao, which is uh, Crixie, which they played really, really well and has a lot of good synergy with uh, Ukiyo and the Alice or Sun Bin here. So let's see what they're going to decide. Oh, they're going to go for Tiger. Interesting. So that means the side lane is going to be two melees, because um, Pongo normally isn't played side lane. Well, Got to find a way to change it up as Cal Demon gets hovered, as well as a final pick here for M on VSR. Yeah, it looks like they're hovering Cal Demon. That's very interesting. They pick Cal Demon because they already have Tiami, which is a support. Cal Demon is a lumber in Arena of Valor, so we'll see if they're going to end up picking him. And you can see Dao Chan. Dao Chan is picked up. That is. Uh, L'Oreal, and I think they may have picked it up to deny the combo of Alice L'Oreal. 20 seconds, final final situation as a quick hover and a quick change as it looks like Q doesn't, because he doesn't have that Marco Polo, he's got to find a way to handle on the side lane. And it looks like that's what's locked in. Yep, that is what's going to be locked in. Uh, that is Lan Ling. He is the Batman from Arena Valor. He has a lot of good vision. So he's going to be a very critical uh, hero here that's going to make a lot of sneaky stuff plays there, going invisible and jumping on his target marker. His target. 40 seconds left for M8. This is one of their last chances. If they lose this game, 
this guarantees that they will not be making it to the semifinals. Two losses and you're not able to do anything. Yeah, yeah, and and that's going to be zero points every loss. Um, but and these are winning this is going to give them six points. So and that's looking really really good for them. All right, 17 seconds left. With M8, letting it go down to the wire here. Because they want to make sure they can have the most synergistic final pick to go in with their team. Yeah. Oh, they're going to go ahead and pick up uh, Fire Dance Mage, which is Raz here. So this this could be something that works out as long as they play in combo. Because honestly, their entire team has very strong early game with Yoku, uh, Alice, which supports them. Uh, of course, uh, Pangu and, and then uh, Fire Dancer, so they could they have a good potential to to really combo and hopefully make uh, VS Star run for money. All right, it's the last 15 seconds. They can change talents. They can swap out who is going to play who, and then it's time to get ourselves loaded into the Valley of Kings. VSR is one win away from guaranteeing themselves a, a spot in the semifinals already here in round number two. And it's time to get ourselves into it. As, uh, everybody is there. Everybody is ready to rock and roll. The loading bars have been completed. And ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get into our final potential final game of the night here on the Game Sports stage in Honor of Kings. Yeah, definitely going to be their last game for Honor of Kings uh, today. So let's see how MA can do to hang in there. And we do have a pause that's kind of um, happened right off the bat here. Uh, so let's see what the re issue is and hopefully we're going to be able to resolve it. Looks like uh, some connectivity things on the side of V-Star. They want to make sure that they're ready to rock before they get themselves into the game. They want to secure the 2-0. They want to get started, they can get it pretty quickly. Yeah. They definitely, hopefully, can resolve this very quickly. But I want to see Lang Lang play. Because um, that's the Batman for Reign of Valor and see the play style that the um, SR is going to pull out here. How do you feel Lang Lang actually goes into this this uh, this VSR composition? Like, how, how does Lang Lang fit? It's all about vision. It's all about vision and he can hit a lot the squishy high value targets. Um, the smart thing about the draft of of um, M8 is the only squishy targets is uh, is Fire Dance, so Fire Dancer and then potentially Tiger. All right, game has started. They find themselves into the Valley of Kings as game number two of our second match here in round number two. It has begun. Who's gonna walk away? So who's definitely going to walk away here? And this is a lot on the line for MA. They have to win this game to stay in it, or else they're going to have two losses for the group stage. No oh, one's really aggressing this early. Yep. They're all backing off. Slower start. They don't want to yeah. go. They don't want to go too crazy just yet. Oh, and they're going to go ahead and. Is that a jungle? Wait, no, that's okay. That's L'Oreal or, or Dao, Dao Chan, which is L'Oreal and Arena yep, Valor. Yep, yep, yeah. Nothing too crazy here. As we have four members of V-Star now, was floating around the mid lane. This is a uh, jungle moment for Lan Ling, which is, I know, the one that you're wanting to see to make sure that we have onto something, because it looks like Jay wants to find a way to see if he can snipe away oh, onto that wow. blue statue. Oh, he's able to get it, actually. Nice. Kwong's not able to get anything as well. He's got the cooldown reduction as well as the extra mana Look regen. That. Kwong is forced to go oh, out and away, and there you go. That is a buff steal, but more importantly, that is a lot of XP lost what in the jungle. Play. Yeah, the buff steal and putting pressure against his opponents and activating um, that, that play there. All right. Now we find ourselves at a moment of immediate advantage. For Jay and the rest of V-Star. The 15 second timer comes in for the... Oh, look at that poke damage. Nice play by uh, uh, QI here. And that's going to set them up to take the Vision Bird and potentially set up for a Tyrant here. V-Star doing pretty well so far. Two minutes into the game and a lot slower. This is something that we see 
uh, that we see Vsar actually do a little bit different than D Team. They're not super aggressive in the first two minutes. Uh, they actually decide to just slow it down and go for more objectives. You saw that with a successful blue statue steal, as well as a very early Tyrant kill. They want to get themselves farmed up because they want to make sure that they have those quick advantages as soon as their item spikes hit. Yeah, exactly. And that's the time to take advantage and push your lead there once you have those item spikes and, and level you over it. And they're starting to get that 6.4k to 5.4. And look at that, the level differences. A lot of 4 5s on M HP and power, but way more 5s here on... Um, a little bit of damage coming out there. Guang tries to see if he can get a little bit of stuff, but it's not going to matter as Lan Ling is able to secure himself a victory right off the bat. And Nessie oh. Yang goes down again. The is able oh. to pick that up of a quick snipe. And just like that, Q continues his domination from game number one. Yeah, a little bit of overextension there, um, uh, ST. But nice job by uh, by uh, Lan Ling there on, on, on the... The stealth using his ultimate to get onto the back line and secure the kill. So really good job by him. V in the meanwhile, solo farming in the top side without any issues up against up against Schwan. Four members now. Yet again, they got the blue buff steal at the earlier stages of the game, so they have the timing. They're gonna take it, which means two members of two blue buffs and already starving out M8 at a yeah. fifteen hundred gold lead. This is um Pretty rough for for Indonesia. Let, let these trains continue. It's definitely gonna affect them here. A little bit of poke Ooh. damage there on a Guang, and we've just seen these oh. Chinese mid laners put in serious damage against their opponents. Yeah, and Lan uh, look Lang, at that. Lan Lang right just gets back. a nice little solo. Excuse me, uh, I would like that wolf, please. Yes. <laughs> um, but you can see there, four minute mark again, jump. They, yep. get, they get they get a turret. I mean, this is like clockwork for these Chinese team. They always get that they turret. Practice that these they or, practice or these rotations time and time again. And uh, that's kind of created a little, little bit of a difficult spot. Looks like Ball JX is going to be able to have it. They uh, tried to see if they can get a snipe. They actually were able to get a snipe onto Swang. Oh, can they do it again? The Elsu snipes, we see what they look like in other situations. He tries to get something. He does get it on the mic. Is now charges it again. Oh, nice little dodge close. there by nice little dodge there by St. Young. Yeah, and the the key here for the composition of VSR is they got to they have to get ahead because um, you know with the heroes they have here, um, they they don't want to let, for example. Uh, Wong on his fire dance mage get to late game scale here. So timing another on the blue statue. This time you've got members of M8 Hexa to try to get it, but it doesn't matter. Lan Ling is gonna be able to pick that up immediately. M and Q are there helping out. Tyrant's alive, which means that's gonna be another objective for them. And uh, three quick kills have been working pretty healthily in their favor. Yeah, definitely, and they're gonna go ahead and um, nice job by VSR taking the gold. Uh, the dark time as well. Oh, Schwan's trying to get something, but it's not going to be enough on the other oh. side of the map, though. Lan Ling gets on a killing spree, securing yet another victory. That's four kills and already three and a half thousand gold into the hands of V-Star. Yeah, I love what he does there. He has his ultimate up. He has both the buffs and just made a play there. So really good job. That ultimate from him is very, very useful. And they're proxy farming to make sure that that's even more experience denied onto, M, uh, onto M8. They're just going to let the minions continue to take that tower. So that way they can continue to have this. The minions take down the tower. They don't really care much about that. They just want to get the objective. They steal the red statue as well. QI tries to see if he can get a little bit of something. Goes in tower's range, though, and gets seen. Yeah, definitely gets seen there. And they got to be careful. They got to pay more cautious underneath the tower and hopefully get a pick here. Because that's the only way they're going to come back in this game and start picking. Otherwise, uh, their opponents are going to continue to get more volley and put the cheap but there she go from there. All right. Oh. Another kill goes into the hands of Lan Ling. It does not matter. Nothing that MA can do is working out for them right now. 5 and 0 oh for V Star, but more importantly, it is almost 5,000 wow. gold. You have another kill. Schwan ends up going down. Now you've got multiple members trying to see if they can oh. have something. An almost fadeaway kill on ST Young, but it's not going to be enough just yet, though. It will make them back away. 
And they're going to try to see if they can take these minions as another tower has on the top side of the map. It does look like V was solo pushing on the top side and said, you know what, I, I want this tower, it's going to be mine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And look at that, they're going to go ahead and take down another tower within 7 minutes and 20 seconds. That's 4 towers and 2 tyrants already. Again, running this game like clockwork. Well, like another tower just falls. Yep, that's going to be making it 5 and 7 and a half minutes. A nice little pop up there. Unstoppable goes Lin Wow. Lin, goes Lin Yang. And they're not able to do anything at all. As uh, if you thought game number 1 was quick, if you thought game number 1 was rough, Game number two is a lot rougher here for M8 as V-Star is just boom, boom, boom. Yeah, their hopes are dwindling the second this game goes on here um, because they have to start making a play. But look at these tight rotations from V-Star. They're not going to let you uh, out-rotate them. Nope, they have six towers before the Overlord even spawns. So they don't even yeah. need the Overlord vanguards to really do much of anything. They've just continued to keep on the pressure. They've continued to be on the aggression. And they've got so much of a gold advantage now that they can just continue to poke away. They took 25% of this high ground turret on the bot side. They are holding strong and flexing muscles. Yeah, definitely holding strong here. And the good news is Rotate is tiring. Oh, what, what M8 needs to do here is combo and use their abilities together to make a play here because look how far they are. They're almost behind. They're 8,000 gold, zero kills on They've their lost 1,000 gold advantage every, every minute. minute. Yeah. Every That's single huge. minute, Sweet Jay. Yeah. Uh-oh. You've got an invisible... Oh. You've got oh. an invisible man. There's three members there. I don't think he's at the position where he can 1v5 yet, but he doesn't care. He wants to have it. He goes on a June. Gets a little bit of damage on a Guang, but it's not going to oh, be enough. Wow. His teammate's able to help himself out. Guang ends up going down. They're going to continue to keep the pressure. But it's not going to matter. A little bit of a snipe won't be able to get the kill. It was a 1v1 trade when Young does end up going down. Guang goes down as well, but they still have the advantage. They're going to be able to push. They're going to go into the tower dive. They want all of the damage. They got the members to do it up. Q's just rocking moves with that L2, and he's going to be able to have it. He ends up being able to pick up yet another one. And there you have it, 9-1 to one and a 7,000 gold lead in advantage of Isar. Yeah, amazing snipes there by QY, putting so much pressure on his opponent. And they can't even respond to him. They can't even get close to him. They can't even gank him. So really, really nice job there. The inner ring and the outer ring have been completely demolished. M8X isn't able to do something. A little bit oh, of split no. push coming out of V, and he's going to get done. And there you go. Your points on the board there for M8. Yeah, more points. Uh, that's huge there. Maybe the potentially have a chance to come back, still suffering a huge deficit. It's a tall task, Jeff. Yeah. It's a tall task indeed. Not too sure if they're going to be able to have too much of it. You could see... You could see him kind of lurking around. Oh, he gets caught in Lying there. Lang tries to have it, oh, and Schwan's just going to go immediately down. There's nothing he can do. Yeah. He tries to have it, misses the skill shot, but it doesn't matter because the final auto attack will end up taking them down, and they're already going to start the damage onto it. That's going to be a tank down and nope, they don't actually decide to go for the overlord instead they decide to back off and catch out guang instead lots of damage done unto him they're just going to say you know what let's just keep things up let's go over to that dark tyrant and go for that instead yeah dark tyrant is going to be the move that they can take here take the dark tyrant then move your way put pressure on the home mat and then start taking the overlord next but honestly, uh, Landling, uh, this Batman player has been doing an amazing job on Landling so far, understanding his win type chain, using his ultimate to just one shot if he wants to low enough. And there we go! They're gonna get the Dark Tyrant. Look at the huge bonus buffs that they got as yep. well. And now they can go ahead and go for the Air Age Towers if that's what he wants. Yeah, but it doesn't look like they're actually gonna go for the Overlord. You had a couple members of M8 that kind of thought about it, but with the huge amount of minion waves coming to the mid and the bottom side, and the buffs that they've got from the Dark Tyrant now, this is gonna be an easy opportunity for them to push. You can see all five members there. They're not gonna worry about it. They're actually going to dive, and immediately oh, wow. Schwan gets decimated. High ground tower goes down in the bot side as well. They're going to try to see if they can do a last stand. That's 30% HP on one snipe coming out of Q. He's able to miss one, tries to get the fade away to get to the other. M's going to go down. Not just yet. He's actually going to have a lot flicker over the wall. But there's Jay. Lots of damage and a bing bang and a bop. He goes down. It's 12 to 3 and an 8k advantage for V-Star. Yeah, that is a huge though. I mean, for them to get the kills back, but they're not going to have any type of person. Look at the damage. Oh my goodness. A beautiful play by uh, Mr. Antiai getting the chain lance and then landing that stun combo. 
That's awesome. But another thing too, look at VV. He is playing on this Lubu so well. You saw he activates his ultimate at the right moment, zones on people, and it secures the towers. Again, their method of taking towers and pushing objectives is just such a joy to watch. But despite the fact that V-Star has such an advantage, they still are smart enough of a team to not over push too far ahead. They take the high ground tower, they get a couple kills where they can, they back off, they collect their winnings, and then they decide to go for more. They continue to control the jungle with the Lan Ling, and see if they can push things up, and there you go. There we go. They're Next go on ahead. the menu, yeah. Overlord is there, which means the Vanguards will be coming very soon. It is a 13 minute game right now, and a moment by moment of the inevitable seems the case for V-Star and the unfortunate demise of M8. Yeah, this is an unfortunate demise indeed. Um, they're playing such two well-known or great Chinese teams, and it definitely gave them a run for the money here. So they have to definitely lick their wounds and hopefully continue to work on their synergy and their macro rotations against a teams as good as China. All right. The vanguards are halfway down the wave now, and this is where things are going to get sticky for M8. They do have essentially one team fight and final stand, but not when the damage out of QI is coming out that strong. As Guang finds himself in a rough spot already, 50% HP on the high ground tower in the mid side. There's super minions coming down the bot. The vanguard is going to meet them as well. All of the poke is trying to come out here in one simple dive from V-Star, and all could be a disaster. There it is. You can see the Candy Cane Prism is going around. Unstoppable yeah. goes V-Star oh, wow. as they try to have it. A second one goes down. They're able to get themselves on one to a tray, but it's not going to be enough because he will be revived immediately. A double kill goes into their hands. There's the damage, the Vanguard to take it, and it looks like this is coming close to an end. Yeah, it is coming close to an end there. And the sloppiness of that fight there, I feel like M8 could have fought and focused a little better, but that's what VSR did, and that's why they're able to win this fight and secure the kills against their opponent. Legendary 7-0-5. Wow. The Lan Ling has it as well. An explosion of the core and another 2-0 sweep for the Chinese teams, as now this time it is V-Star that walks away with the win. Yeah, and V-Star is going to get three points for that as well, putting them now at a total of six points, I believe. MS, 0, yeah. 0 and 12. He didn't die a single time that wow. game. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's a pretty good place to be if you're V-Star, coming in as the overall number one seed. And uh, this match that we just saw against M8 certainly proves why they are one of the best teams here. Yeah, and you can see why a lot of teams, even in the King Pro League, they pick landing on, on the Batman for that vision yeah. control. And you can see how we did. He did such a good job going to the back line, getting these kills, pocketing kills. As soon as his teammates are farming their jungle, he gets a kill across the map, and then they're like, okay, now it's open, and they can take that advantage and push it further. So now this eliminates M8 from the playing field. They still have another game, but it's not going to matter because uh, not winning any points in two of your four matches puts you in a very, very rough position as they're going to shake hands, the Malaysian team, but despite their best efforts, were still <laughs> demolished pretty hard yeah. by V-Star in the Chinese squad. Yeah, you can definitely see that and, you know, look at the team. Just some, someone smiling, but so far, China has really showed up at this competition. And and not only that, but you, you got to see in both of the, the production value of D-Team and V-Star, yeah. there is a very strong case for the side laners because when you take a look at uh, what you have from Cuckoo, when you take a look at what you have from QY, they're very strong and they were certainly showing what happens when you're able to win your solo lane and able to snowball those heroes. Yeah, that, and that is so important. You see every time around the four minute mark, they just take the tier one tower. Yeah. And and it's like clockwork. Every time they take tier one tower, it opens up jungle, they, they steal your jungle, they have river control, they start taking objectives, start hitting ganks, and they take your other tier one tower and they had four towers within about less than seven minutes. I think five towers within seven minutes in that game. Yep. It's a this, very quick game. Yeah, it is indeed. And and what I want to see now, and, and I mentioned this before, is D-Team versus V-Star. That's yeah. going to be the game be of to decide who is the, the higher seed right. coming out of this group. And that's that's going to be a that's going to be an exciting one to see because they have two very different early game play styles. Mm. You have jungle control from the early game of V-Star. You have aggressive kill based into a quick tyrant coming from the side of D-Team. There's a lot of options, and I like to see it. 
Yeah, I love seeing that too, and I can't wait uh, with the with the with la putting Lanling out. It's great to see these heroes being tried out. All right, well uh, now we can take a look at the standings and see what exactly exists with uh, the the day. We of course we have Crossfire uh, <laughs> that we saw earlier today. Yeah. It is uh, three wins for China in all gamers, and then two and two for Pacific Macta Inferma and Super Valiant. Yeah, then you can see U.S. there is third place at one one. So not bad for day one. Crossfire, of course, uh, showing a lot of effort with the teams. Hearthstone now. We've got uh, China, Hungary, and sitting at three and one. U.S. and Terence, of course, sitting at two and one. Still lots of things left to be seen for them in day number one. Yeah, definitely here. But a lot of matches have been played, and we're only going full into swing. We have a couple more days to go. So can't lose sight of the goal here. And let's see how the other teams have performed across the games, other games. Yep, we've got Clash Royale. Looks like Juicy J from the US of A have done a 3-1 yeah. thus far. Very you well also have, yep, FMGG sitting at 3-1. And, one. and uh, Juicy J, I think, is a familiar that you're fam that, uh, is a player you're yep. familiar with yep. within the American scene. Yeah, very positive kid. Loves to learn a lot and, and surprised. Very young as well. Yeah, he is. He is very young. Yeah. So so great job there. He's carrying, hopefully, the gold for USA later. Well, lots of things left. Now, uh, taking a look at tomorrow's schedule, you have two Dota 2 matches, Crossfire, StarCraft, and then Warcraft 3 that's going to be hanging out there and from what we will see. Yeah, so I can't wait to watch some of the Warcraft 3. I love that game. I used to play it a lot. Yeah, of course, uh, you got Moon hanging out from Korea. I know a, a team that, uh, a player that the second that he came on stage, uh, the, the the Korean fans out there certainly uh, enjoyed everything that he had and brought to the table. Yeah, they definitely did. Uh, they cheered when uh, he came on that stage there. So that was great to see a lot of the fandom there. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been an exciting day. Number one, it is coming to a to a uh, stunning close. We got to see two great honor of kings matches with uh, the two juggernaut Chinese teams from Group A, uh, showing all of the success and a lot of things left to be seen tomorrow. Any developments that you feel like you want to see coming into day number two? Yeah, I, I feel like uh, day two we have to respond to some of the, the the draft and the meta game that they're playing with landling the tower rushing, getting it with the first tier one within the, that. Four minute mark and just snowballing off that and these aggressive uh, four man rotations into the enemy jungle you need to counter rotate that or, or, or set up a play to, to counter gank uh, these jungle invades and if you don't respond to that I don't think a team is going to be able to hold their own against China and I think it really shows as well that you have to be able to control your solo lanes when you take a look at the power that we saw in the mid lane and the overwhelming strength that we saw in uh, in the top lane things are crazy but guys that's going to do it for myself jump as well as my co-caster Sweet Jay it's been an exciting day and we will see you guys tomorrow for more